Hello everyone from Math 2200, Discrete Mathematics. It's Professor Wenson here again with a video on your Zybooks, section 4.2, titled Floor and Ceiling Functions. All right, so in the first section of chapter 4, you were just introduced to functions and definitions and you know what a function was. Uh, in this section here, we're just introduced to a couple special functions called the floor function and the ceiling function. And I feel they're pretty easy to work with um, to calculate outputs. You know, uh, you're going to be taking real numbers as inputs, and your outputs will be uh, in integers. All right, so let's take a look. So the floor function and the ceiling function map real numbers onto integers. All right, so the domain is the real numbers and the target is the integers. The floor and ceiling functions round real numbers to a nearby integer in different ways. Alright, so the floor function. The floor function maps a real number to the nearest integer in the downward direction. In other words, you know, the floor, they call it floor, instead of just f, it's the, the name of the function is floor. Domain is the reals, the target is the integers. And floor of x is equal to the largest integer y, such that y is less than or equal to x. Right? So it's the, it's the largest integer that's less than or equal to the, the input. Now there's some fancy notation for this. Uh, the floor function is often written this way. Instead of floor of x, you have x with this these little like half, you know, incomplete brackets, where like you know the 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 the, the parts of the brackets that stick out are beneath x, like on the you know the floor of x below x. And some examples, you know, the floor of 4.32 would just be 4, right? That's the that's the largest integer that's less than or equal to 4.32. And the floor of any integer is itself, right? The floor of 4 would be 4 because 4 is the largest integer less than or equal to 4, right? It satisfies the the or equal to part. Uh, the floor function also rounds negative numbers to the nearest integer in the downward direction, right? The, the floor of negative 4.32 would be negative 5, right? That's, that's the largest integer, thinking of the number line, remember, you, you just move left, basically, move down. Uh, the largest integer that's less than or equal to negative 4.32 would be negative 5. And as I mentioned earlier, the floor of any integer is itself. All right, so the floor of negative 4 is negative 4. Okay. And then the ceiling function is just the other way around. The ceiling function rounds a real number to the nearest integer in the upward direction, or the nearest integer greater than or equal to it. So we got this ceiling function from the domain of the real numbers to the, the target of the integers where the ceiling of x is the smallest integer y such that x is less than or equal to y. So what's the next integer above or equal to the to the input? And it's just, you know, just flip the notation. The ceiling of x is also written this way. We have x and then the in, you know the half brackets where the bracket parts are above the x, you know, on the ceiling tells you that you're going above. So examples, uh, the ceiling of 4.32 would be 5, right? 5 is the smallest integer that's greater than or equal to 4.32. And just as with the floor function, the ceiling of an integer is itself, because it satisfies the or equal to part, the, so the ceiling of 4 is 4. 
And same thing goes for negatives. You know, the ceiling of negative 4.32 would be negative 4. This is the smallest integer that's greater than or equal to, you know, to the right on the number line of uh, negative 4.32. And the ceiling of an integer, negative 4, is itself negative 4. Right? And they show you on the number line, you know, some other examples. So you see the the floor of 1.8 is 1, right? You know, just find find the number on the number line and the floor will take you to the integer below, you know, to the left, unless you're on an integer. Right? Remember, the floor of an integer itself is that integer. Uh, the floor of negative 1.3 is negative 2. Then the ceiling, you slide up to the nearest integer. Again, unless you're on an integer, that's what the last part is. If you're at an integer, you stay there. So the ceiling of 0.3 is 1. The ceiling of uh, negative 0.8 is 0. You slide right, slide up. And for integers, as I said earlier, just stay where you are. The floor of negative 1 is negative 1. The ceiling of negative 1 is negative 1. All right. So real quick and easy examples here. I'll just do every other one of these. What's the floor of 5.6? So the floor, you go down to the next lowest, you know, the next, the, 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 the largest integer less than or equal to 5.6. That'd just be 5. Simple as that. Uh, how about this here, 3? I'll let you do 2. How about the ceiling, right, the ceiling of negative 5.6? So go to the next integer above negative 5.6, which would be negative 5. Right? Negative 5 is the smallest integer greater than or equal to negative 5.6. So this is, the ceiling is negative 5. And then for an integer itself would be, you know, the integer, uh, the floor or ceiling of negative 5 would be negative 5. All right, so our challenge, again, bunch of these. You see how quick these are. You know, I'll do the first three of them. What's the seat, the floor, right, the brackets are on the bottom, the floor of 7.461, that'd just be 7. Real easy. The ceiling of 9.578 would be 10. The floor of negative 3.24 would be negative 4. Okay, I mean... This should be ridiculously easy for you, I hope. All right, and I'll let you f fly through the other ones. All right, now we have some ones where you know, they're, they're nested. There's some inside the other. So I'll actually write one of these out and take a look at it. So let's start this here. And I'll go to a piece of paper. Okay, so here's the first one I'm looking at. Now it's just like parentheses, right? These are like brackets or parentheses that you're normally used to working with. You go to the furthest most inside. So first I'm working in here and then, oh, there, there's another one here. So I'm going to do this one first. You kind of remember how you work with parentheses. You work from the inside out, right? Work from the inside out. So I'll take this most inside set here of brackets. Now this is the ceiling of 1.822. So I'm going to have the floor of negative 8.85, then minus, and then what is the ceiling of 1.822? That's just 2. All right, then again, treat, treat these like parentheses. Simplify what's inside first. Don't, don't do this. The ceiling of x plus y is not going to be the ceiling of x plus the ceiling of y. Right? Don't don't like distribute the ceiling or 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 the floor. Sorry, I meant I meant floor. I wrote floor there. So what's the floor? Uh, you know, again, sim simplify what's inside first, just like a set of parentheses. So this is the floor. 
Now negative 8.5, uh, 0.85 minus 2 would be negative 10.85. And now I have a single number, right? I want a singular number inside these ceiling or floor functions. Uh, and the floor right, of negative 10.85 would be negative 11. Right, again, this is uh, the floor, so you go down, down to the next lower integer. Uh, one below that would be negative 11. Right, so back here I'm going to enter negative 11. Next. All right, now we got some halves. Now if you want to change them to decimals, no problem. Right? I'll write this down. Again, some nested floor and ceiling functions. Well, they're both floors this time. Let's pay attention. Um, I'll write these as decimals. Now, 16 divided by 2, that's, that's just 8. Plus, and then we have the floor of, you know, 19 divided by 2 is 9.5. It's 9 something, right? Uh, even if you didn't know it was 9.5, you know it's 9 something, right? Because 2 goes into 18 9 times, and then you got a little more. And then just as before, work, work from the inside out, right? Work from the inside out. First, I'll take this floor of a single number. So I have the floor of whatever, 8 plus. And then what's, this, what's the floor of 9.5 that's sliding down? That would just be 9. And 9 plus 8 in here. Right, so again, you want a single number inside before you apply it. 9 plus 8 is 17, and remember I said this a bunch so far. The floor or the ceiling of an integer is just that integer. Right, so this ends up being just a 17. Right. Back here, 17. Fantastic. And I keep moving this four of those. Alright, right, then we have this next activity where we're expressing um, something in terms of the floor or ceiling function, right? expressing some amount. So for example, a soccer team has X players. A pack of water contains six bottles of water. So how many packs of water are needed to provide each player with one bottle of water? All right, so let me show you what's going on here. Again, I'll go to some paper. So again, it said the team has you know, X players. And uh, you know, a, a, a pack of water has six bottles. So let's think about this. You know, if x were equal to one, uh, let's say the let's say w equals number of packs of water that you would need. Right? So if the team only had one player, that's not much of a team, I know. Uh, you know, the number you'd only need to get one pack of water. Right? Uh, if the team had two players, again, you'd only need one pack of water. You'd only need one pack of water up until you had six players. Oops, sorry. Right, you only need one pack of water. But then as soon as you pass six players, right, seven players, then you need two packs of water, don't you? And, and so on up until, you know, once you get 13 players, then you need three packs of water. Because, you know, the two packs of water only gives you 12 bottles. And there are 13 players, and you want every, every. Yeah. So what are we doing here? All right, what are we doing? We're taking the number of players, and I'm dividing up. You know, I'm dividing them up into s groups of six, all right? Because every group of six is going to get one pack of water. Does that make sense? I hope. All right? Take the number of players. And I'm dividing them up into groups of six. So x divided by six. How many groups of six can I make? And each group of six uh, gets a pack of water. Now, 
I can't keep it this way. Because again, what if I had 7 divided by 6? You know, again, what if there are 7 players on the team? You know, this is 1 and 1 6. You're not buying 1 and 1 6 bottles of water. But what did I say we need to buy, right? Well, you need to buy that one, but you also need, because there's this one person left over, you need to buy a second case of water. So am I bumping this up or down? I'm bumping up, so that's why I would need the ceiling. Right? If I do the ceiling of 7 divided by 6, that gives me the, the two packs of water I need. Right? And you can figure this out for, you know, how about 13, right? What, what's the ceiling of 13 divided by 6? Oops, ceiling. Or right, this is just the ceiling of, you know, 2 and 1 sixth, which is 3. I, I would need 3 packs of water for 13 people. So for X people, right, you break them up into groups of six and then, you know, bump it up, right, because you want to have enough water. If you bump it down, you know, you might exclude a, a certain group of people. And you, you, that's not good for if you want everybody to have water. So the ceiling of X divided by six would make sense for how many uh, packs of water I would need to purchase. So again, I'll leave uh, I'll leave the second expression to you to think about. Right. And then you have your additional exercises, which again some of these are in your assignment five, some are not. I would still recommend looking at all of them. Uh, and you got the solutions you can look at, you know, to check yourself. And please only use them to check yourself. Actually work on it and try to try to figure these things out before you look at the solutions. Don't just copy them down. You're not going to learn anything that way. And uh, yeah, that's it for section 4.2. Pretty quick. Uh, floor and ceiling functions, hopefully pretty easy. And uh, let me know if you have any questions, of course. And thank you very much for watching.